Good day, I'm Mike Lugo. I am the Complaints Director for the 4th Vitamin Inspector General's Office. Today I'm going to give you some information about the programs that the IG office oversees. Uh, let's start with the introduction of the Inspector General. Uh, on behalf of Lieutenant Colonel Timothy Tyndall, who is a 4th Vitamin Inspector General, I want to welcome each of you to Seymour Johnson. Colonel Tyndall is the 4th Vitamin IG. Like I said earlier, I am the Complaints Director and Major Jonathan Haba is the Inspections Director. This morning, I'm going to talk to you about the Complaints Resolution Program. Uh, for those that aren't aware, Title 10 of the United States Code, Section 1034, is titled Military Whistleblower Protection. And this program is a federally mandated program that establishes two provisions for all Armed Force members. The first provision is that no one can deny Air Force personnel access to the Inspector General. If someone in command makes the statement that it's not in your best interest to talk to your congressional representatives or any level inspector general. They have just infringed upon your rights under the law and they committed what's called restricted access. Under the law, Title 10, Section 1034, you can file a formal complaint alleging that this individual restricted you from communicating with your congressional representatives or any level inspector general. And you would do that through the complaints office. The second part of the law states you're not to be retaliated against because you made that protected communication to either of those two entities. That retaliation is defined as reprisal, and reprisal can be anything from removed from a duty position, served a letter of reprimand, having your evaluation downgraded, uh, having any type of administrative action initiated against you, a discharge package, a demotion package, or any type of UCMJ action initiated against you, issued an Article 15, or issued a uh, court-martial. Those are all categorized as reprisal acts. Reprisal can also be the withholding of a favorable personnel action. Say you have a promotion line number, you reach out to Congress or the IG, command learns about your contact to those entities, and when it comes time for you to put your rank on, it's being mysteriously withheld. That also could be categorized as a reprisal act. And again, under the law, if you feel any of those acts have occurred, you have the right to file a formal complaint, which you would do through my office. Now, there are some timelines for certain complaint issues. For the restriction access type of complaint, there is an indefinite timeline on filing a complaint. So whenever you learn about the wrong or you feel that the wrong has occurred, there's no uh, cutoff date to file a complaint. Under the reprisal complaint action, there is a one-year time period from the date you discovered the wrong. And from that day, that's when the clock starts. That's when you have to reach out to the IG uh, prior to the end of that year time period. Any other complaints that don't fall under restricted access or reprisal type category, those complaint issues usually have a 60-day uh, timeline to file a complaint. Most likely, those complaint issues will be referred to command to address because they don't meet the criteria for restricted access or reprisal. Uh, some things for you to consider, the IG, uh, does not determine guilt or innocence of a subject of a complainant. Uh, our main focus is to determine whether or not the facts surrounding the complaint are supported. Uh, either they sub substantiate the allegation or they do not substantiate the allegation. There have been instances in which individuals who have received pending UCMJ action or a UCMJ action reached out to the IG to file a complaint thinking that that would stop the action. That is not the case. The IG does not have the authority to stop any type of UCMJ actions. That does not mean the IG will stop looking at your complaint issue. While we're looking at it, and if we determine that reprisal did occur, then we will notify your commander about that. And we'll also file, notify the complainant, and the complainant will have the opportunity to take uh, the IG's report of investigation and submit an appeals package to the Air Force Board of Correction of Military Records. The BCMR, their primary function is to address any type of negative information that's impacting a military member's record. When a complainant who received a court martial proceeding, Article 15, files a complaint and we substantiate that yes, command's actions did violate a whistleblower, a report of investigation, like I mentioned, can be used to justify the appeals package to the BCMR. When the BCMR gets the package, they're not going to reinvestigate the issue because they consider the IG Office of Trusted Agency, meaning that their decision or their analysis on the outcome of the issue um, would stand in court. 
Now the onus is on the complainant to reach out to the BCMR to utilize that provision. Now as far as what type of complaint categories the IG will look at. The IG is specifically going to look at matters, uh, allegations of injustice, violations of law or directive, that's both federal law, state law, DOD directive, Air Force instruction, squadron policy, any mismanagement, waste of funds, or anything that's going to cause danger to the public's health or safety. Now, not every, like I mentioned earlier, not everything that comes to the IG falls within our purview to look at. Uh, there are some complaint issues that we do not have the authority to address. Just because we don't have the authority to address it does not mean we're not available to you to make sure you're talking to the right agency to get that issue addressed. If an agency says, hey, they need to make an appointment, we'll help you schedule those appointments. If the agency says, well, we need these forms filled out, we'll get those forms for you to fill out. If you need a written statement, we'll assist you in drafting that statement. Because Colonel Tyndall and I's primary focus, as I mentioned earlier, is to address whistleblower violations, but we're also here to help you should you see, uh, find yourself in a situation where you've reached out to command and you don't feel command is adequately helping you. We're here to help you. Now, how to get a complaint resolved. Uh, the primary preferred channel for complaint resolution is going to be the chain of command. The reason that is, is links in your chain of command will most likely have all the facts associated with your issue, or they may even have the authority to correct the problem. Uh, historically, the IG has seen some instances in where links in the chain of command either abused their authority or they overstepped their authority uh, delegated to them. And what I mean by that is there have been instances where individuals have brought complaints to a link in the chain of command and that link made the decision that, yeah, we're not going to take it up to the commander. The commander doesn't need to be bothered with this. While they may think they're doing a service to the commander, the reality is the only one that can make a decision on an individual's complaint is a commander on G-Series orders. So just be aware of that. Where we historically see those issues of hitting that roadblock usually occurs around the superintendent position and then goes on up to uh, the chief enlisted manager, uh, the first sergeant, maybe a deputy commander. Just be aware that if you do hit those roadblocks, your commander has what's called an open door policy, which is another resolution channel that's available to you. That open door policy grants you the right to talk to your commander face to face about an issue you're dealing with if you feel the chain of command isn't adequately addressing the issue. The best way to go about using that uh, open door policy is ask your supervisor to explain that policy to you. Every commander has one. It's either verbal or it's written. But reach out to your supervisor, have them explain it to you, and you'll get the details on how to utilize the commander's open door policy. Now there are other systems available to establish issues that are established by written guidance already. Um, and the IG's guidance states that if there is a, a directive, a resolution channel that's established by written guidance, that system has to be exhausted first before utilizing the IG system. So a good example of that is in the evaluations AFI. Uh, that instruction provides individuals the right to appeal their final report before it comes a matter of record. Uh, the appeals board can address anything in that report from the bullet statements, the markings, the overall ratings to endorsements. That would be your first course of resolution to reach out through the appeals boards if you have questions or concerns about your evaluations. And that's, like I said, it's just an example of a system that's already established in place. Now, how to file a complaint. Currently, right now, what you will do is you will call the IG Complaints Directorate's cell phone, and that number is 919-273-9850. Or you can leave a message on the IG Complaints Hotline. That number is going to be 919-722-0211 or you can reach us via email at 4fw.ig at us.af.mil. You could also submit a letter to us through good old snail mail, United States Postal Service, and you would address it to 4th Friday IG, uh, 1510 Wright Brothers Avenue, Suite 100, Seymour Johnson Air Force Base, North Carolina, 27531. Now, I'm sure all of you are familiar with the Seymour Johnson app. Uh, there is more detailed information about the complaints program and our contact information on that app. 
If you go to the resources tab on the app and you scroll down till you get to the IG icon, when you hit that IG icon, it'll open up to the IG tab and there you can find detailed information about the program. The last uh, item on that uh, tab, it says IG poster. You click that, you'll be able to get our contact information and our email information. That's all I have for you today. I hope each of you enjoy your tour here at Seymour Johnson and stand by for the inspection director to give you some information. Thank you. Have a good day.